Only on CBS Atlanta, the parents of a teen gunned down by a police sniper share their horrific story. The 16 year old was suicidal and the cops were called to help. Tonight, our chief investigative reporter Wendy Saltzman shows us video from inside that home that was taken by Andrew minutes before he died and she details never released about his death. Like just about any other kid, Andrew had had a bad day at school. The pressure was so overwhelming, he grabbed a gun and threatened to kill himself. His mother called the cops in desperation, hoping an officer would come talk to him. But what arrived was an army of deputies, an armored tank and a sniper. We'd still be sitting there today if it weren't for that very, very aggressive uh, a, a, a act that he made of ramming the gun and the pistol straight through a, a, a glass door at, at our officers. These words uttered the day after the shooting by Cherokee County Sheriff Roger Garrison paint a picture of a dangerous gunman taking aim at his officers. Had that officer not taken the action, there's a good chance that one of those negotiators that were there who also has a family would not be uh, going home today. But the other side of this story has never been told before about a boy described as a pacifist who some say was needlessly killed. Would you have ever called the police if you knew this could have happened? Oh, that's the one thing I would have done different today. I would not have called 911. Andrew's parents, Lisa and Nick Messina. Who's my best friend? are speaking out for the first time to tell what they say really happened to their son. It was May 1st of this year and Andrew had just gotten a bad grade at school. He just got sad and kind of down on himself and talked about running away and um, and that, that discussion kind of went to talk about maybe taking his own life. It just happened so fast and then he went upstairs. He had a gun in his hand. Messina picked up the phone and called 911. I need you to get away from him if you think he's going to shoot you. Well, yeah, I think he's going to shoot himself. The operator told her to get out of the house. How many cars are coming this morning, right? I'm not sure. But the next thing they knew, a slew of officers arrived. Report an army to kill a 16-year-old boy, take out a 16-year-old boy. The teen was inside his home alone with no hostages. He had a 357 Magnum in his hand and was drinking and threatening to kill himself. He took this video speaking to his father on the phone. I do know that I personally don't want to live, so you should probably just let this happen if you really love me. But law enforcement negotiators soon cut off that call. I'm not coming closer. I'll stand right here. Like I think I'll take a step back. Deputies in combat gear surrounded the home with a frightened boy inside. My son must have been terrified. Terrified at that scene out there with guns and rifles pointed at him. Is that a riot shield? That's a riot shield. Why are you you know, I'm not even, this isn't a riot. This is one person who's pissed off. Andrew begged negotiators several times to speak with his father. I'm like, hey, where's my dad? He's supposed to be here. Nick and Lisa were down the street, just a few feet away. Sir, uh, where's, where, where's my father? Where, where is he? That just bothers me more. Um, to think that, he, that he, my son was in here by himself minutes before his, his death, asking for me. About 15 minutes before the fatal shot, Lisa and Nick Messina saw sniper Jason Yarborough walk past them in camouflage with his rifle over his shoulder. The sniper scope focused at this front door helped him to see clearly as if he was holding a gun from just five feet away. A minute later, this horrendous cannon shot. And he was dead. Absolutely shock and numbness. Like, no, there's no way that, that they shot him, but they did. Coming up next, the aggressive move the sheriff says Andrew made that led to his killing and the forensic evidence an attorney says shows the only person at risk was Messina himself. I'm Wendy Saltzman. I'll have those details later in the broadcast. Now to more on the shooting of 16 year old Andrew Messina. The sheriff says Messina made an aggressive gesture that caused a sniper to fire his weapon to protect law enforcement officers. But new evidence presented only to CBS Atlanta by the Messina's attorney may tell a different story. Here's our chief investigative reporter, Wendy Saltzman. We have not been able to find any 
justification whatsoever for that Cherokee County Sheriff's Department sniper to shoot Andrew Messina. Zero. Attorney Chuck Pecor is a former federal prosecutor and a former cop who's been scouring through the Messina's case to uncover evidence the boy didn't need to die. There's nobody at risk except himself. You just, you give it time. You don't rush it, you just wait. The standoff lasted little more than an hour when Andrew was killed. The sheriff justified the fatal shot, saying the teen threatened his officers. We'd still be sitting there today if it weren't for that very, very aggressive uh, a, a, a act that he made. Andrew was inside the house holding a gun and hit this pane of glass. Negotiators were standing here outside of the house behind this wall. In this GBI report, sniper Jason Yarborough said he heard a pop that sounded like a gunshot and he observed Messina through his rifle scope pointing the pistol at deputies. But there's one problem. He pretty much had his back to the negotiation team when he was shot. How could he possibly have been threatening them? The bullet came through this door. The autopsy report says Andrew was shot in the right side of his abdomen and the bullet came out the left side, which means he couldn't have been pointing the gun at negotiators behind him. And not a single shot was ever fired from Andrew's weapon. Not a single officer out there ever. Any of the report says that they saw the gun come through that hole where the brake was. Yarborough was on the scene less than 20 minutes before he pulled the trigger and admitted he didn't even know if there was a hostage inside. It's a travesty. Pequor and others are concerned the sniper acted in haste without being properly briefed that Andrew was a suicidal teen, not a hardened criminal. What he needed was help. He needed protection and help and he didn't get it. <laughs> would this make you hesitate to call the police? I would never call them for help, no. Friends and family are still trying to understand this innocent life lost. Andrew described as a pacifist. As you can see, peace. Whose room decorated with peace signs remains untouched. He could never hold a grudge against anyone. He was the most loving guy he could ever know. I miss how he used to not be afraid to try anything. He was one of the best friends you could have. He always understood. I loved how he was so amazing, amazing and accepting. He was the most peaceful, peaceful person I knew. He should be alive. An internal investigation by the Cherokee County Sheriff's Office and the District Attorney both found there was no criminal wrongdoing. We made numerous attempts to interview the sheriff, the sniper and the commander on the scene, but the Sheriff's Office refused, saying the case is closed, but it's far from closed for the family. I'm Wendy Saltzman, CBS Atlanta News.